Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. Um, uh, so the subject is um, setting up uh, Yocto builds using official tools. What that means that uh, those things are available directly from uh, Pokey repository. Um, but first, uh, I'd like to say a couple words about myself. I'm Alexander or Alex. My specialty is um, distribution engineering and uh, Linux middleware and I try to um, help companies make custom distributions uh, using the Yocta project. And I also try to find time maintaining open embedded core and keeping it um, up to date um, and fixing bugs when I see them. So before we go to the subject, I'd like to uh, uh, quickly review what Yocto actually does. And then we sort of zoom in into the uh, problem and the tools to solve it. So here is a professional looking chart that explains um, all of uh, Yocto on a single slide. And uh, as you may know, Yocto is um, set of tools uh, to make custom Linux distributions. That's like a single sentence that you can describe it. So why would you want a custom Linux distribution? And the answer is usually because you do not want a distribution from a vendor. And why you do not want that? Well, that we leave out. Um, but uh, uh, so you decide to make your own distribution and the distribution is made of those things on the right. So images, packages, um, those are things that go into your product. And then there are all those uh, things that are needed to uh, ship a product to the market. Uh, so bills of materials, uh, license information, uh, you probably want to know if the product is broken or not, so you need to run tests and have test reports. Um, maybe you need to know if it's vulnerable to exploits. And all of this is produced by a tool called BitBake. Um, and BitBake itself doesn't actually know anything about embedded Linux or um, software, building software. It's a uh, task processor. So it uh, builds up a graph of tasks um, with like dependencies between them and then it works its way through the graph until it um, uh, reaches the destination or it finds an error and then it stops. And the tasks are Python or shell uh, scripts that Bitbake runs. So what uh, defines uh, the content of the tasks. Those come from things called uh, layers. And um, okay, today we do not actually talk about what is inside the layers, right? Layers have stuff, uh, stuff uh, defines tasks and BitBake runs them. Um, and uh, another thing that is an input to BitBake is uh, your local build configuration, those two files, localconf and bblayers.conf, uh, that's where you make uh, choices about how you uh, basically parameterize your build, and I'll get into that in a, in a minute. Uh, so what is um, a configuration of the layers? Uh, how do you set them up? So for each layer, you need to get it from somewhere, from some repository. You need to use a specific revision and you need to place it somewhere on a local disk uh, so that Bitbake can find it. And uh, there can be several uh, layers. Um, they're all essentially Git repositories and uh, each three things need to be decided for, for all of them. And uh, that uh, defines how your layers are uh, configured. Uh, then you have your uh, build configuration that uh, are uh, those two files that you set up yourself. 
and uh, later on I will show a video that actually will um, show the example of what those files contain, but um, uh, that's where you need to make uh, decisions before Bitbake can start and uh, there are uh, uh, the decisions are like what uh, what is your uh, distribution because that defines how uh, the layers are built and what target um, target hardware do you actually want uh, uh, for which target hardware do you actually want to build images and packages so those two things go into local conf and uh, then there is file BB layers conf where you uh, say to Bitbake that I want this, this and that layer to be included in a build. And uh, then there is a third file that is specific to your build machine, like where you run Bitbake, where you need, uh, can specify um, how much the build machine can basically cope with, uh, how many tasks can, in, can it run in parallel and uh, also things like um, uh, download cache and estate cache go there as well. Um, but what they mean, uh, I, don't, I don't talk about that. So, um, um, once, okay, here's an even more professional diagram. Um, once you have set up a build locally, and maybe it works perfectly and you're really happy with it, or maybe it really doesn't work and uh, it throws you some cryptic error, at some point uh, you need to actually give all those things to other people. Maybe because they can help you with the error you're having, maybe because they would build on top of your work um, add more things to your distribution. Maybe you actually don't want to give it to people, but to your continuous integration system so that it can uh, run tests on real hardware or the kind of tests that are not easy to run locally. Uh, so uh, you need a way to kind of replicate uh, these three things. Uh, exactly on other people's machines. And by the way, the third thing is the target uh, for Bitbake that it needs to reach in order for build to be successful. It's what you say on the command line, Bitbake and something. Um, so now uh, we kind of get to the problem and the problem is that historically uh, Yocto didn't offer any solution for this. The answer was typically that uh, you need to use some third-party project external to Yocto or maybe you should write a custom script which is um, even worse because custom scripts are usually never documented and they are usually not understood by anybody in the organization. Uh, so please avoid custom scripts not just here, but anywhere. Uh, so, um, uh, the tools for, uh, like the pieces needed to solve this problem are uh, appearing in Open Embedded Core. And uh, this talk is based on um, Mikeldor, the latest release that uh, happened in uh, April, so three months ago, and um, what to do if you use something older than that, I'll get to that uh, at the end of the talk. So now um, we split the problem just one more time further into uh, like two sub problems. First is that um, uh, you need to um, have those things, layer config and build config uh, that we just covered uh, in a format that can easily be moved around to other computers. So put them in some kind of box and you can give it to other people. Um, 
And the second problem is the reverse. Once you uh, get that box from somewhere, uh, you need to turn it into um, the layer configuration, like layers set up, laid out on your local disk correctly, and build configuration. Uh, and then when you run bitbake, bitbake will do exactly the same thing as uh, was done previously on somebody else's uh, computer. And one uh, kind of nice to have uh, feature here is that to set this up, uh, you don't need any uh, special tools. Ideally, uh, you just need to be able to run scripts and uh, like shell scripts and Python scripts and have the Git on your computer and uh, then the rest will be just handled automatically. Right, so now we finally get to the tools and uh, here is uh, like con condense too long, didn't read, didn't listen version on one slide. Uh, but I'm not actually going to talk over it. It's just a kind of one slide reference for you to like a cheat sheet that you can refer uh, later on. Um, so I'll cover those things in greater uh, detail um, on the next couple of slides. So, um, first, we, um, I'd like to talk about how do you save and restore build configurations, those local conf and layers conf things. Um, so, it's a two-way thing, and the way to save them is um, to use this command bitbake layers save build conf. And what it does, it uh, turns your build configuration into something called a build configuration template. And uh, that is um, the same two files, but stored in a, uh, a special location in some layer that you need to choose, like conf templates and my template. So when you run that command, you need to choose two things, the na name of the template, like what your build configuration actually does, what it's for, what its um, purpose, and uh, which layer uh, should it go to. So you need to consider that uh, you should have a layer in your build that uh, stores those configurations, typically a product layer like Meta, product or maybe meta person like meta Alex. Um, and um, uh, the reverse action should be well familiar to you if you used Yocto. It's uh, this dot or oh yeah init build env, a tool that has been around since forever. And um, it uh, it takes as a parameter, um, uh, not like as a, uh, there is a slight mistake there, but it does take as a parameter uh, the uh, path to the template in some layer, and it takes um, those two files from that location and writes it into a build configuration. And what happens if you don't save each template you want, it will go to the default uh, location in Pokey or Open Embedded Core and copy the template from there. And that's how you end up with this uh, familiar to everyone local.conf that has uh, lots of uh, settings and comments, like the starting point for any Yocta build. So um, this tool, oh yeah, you need build env, it's not really friendly to users. I don't like using it at all. Um, so we can do better, and um, but because I'm talking only about things that are available in Master Branch and Mikeldor right now, um, that will be covered at the end in the future directions. Um, okay, so the next um, process is 
uh, saving and restoring layer configurations, like layer locations in, in, on the internet, revisions, and where do you place them on disk. And um, to do that, you need to have an active Yocto build, um, like something where Bitbake runs, and uh, then you say Bitbake-layers, create layer setup. And what happens is that uh, the tool will ask Bitbake to tell what are the layers that are, have been configured in this build. And then it will uh, write information about those layers into the JSON file, and it will add a nice little setup script next to it. And that's all there is to it. Then you can uh, place those two files anywhere you want. You can attach them to email and send it by email. You can place them on um, HTTP server for download. You can also place them in a, in a layer so that people can clone the layer and run the scripts and all the rest of the layers will, will be set up. So that makes it like a bootstrap layer. And um, yeah. The reverse action is actually restoring all the layers. And to do that, you simply run that script. And that's all you need to do. It doesn't ask questions. Uh, it doesn't uh, take, uh, it doesn't require parameters. Well, it has parameters, but you can just run it. And once it completes, you have the, uh, the layers set up and ready to go. And uh, this is a self-contained script, so it doesn't need anything except Python and Git um, binaries. All right. Uh, so um, we have gotten to the uh, video, so now uh, I'd like to show you how all of this works. So let me start the video. Okay, and I guess I need to go out of presentation mode. Yeah. How do you actually put till this work? Yes, excellent. Okay, so let's restart the video. And um, uh, the video actually shows how to set up a Yocto build from nothing at all, because I didn't want to show some existing Yocto build. I wanted to show how do you start from, from nothing. Um, And uh, then, um, but let's just start it. So let's make a directory where all we do all the things. Then we clone uh, Pokis Mikeldor branch because that's where the tools are available and that's where Bitbake is also located so you can run it. And it will take a bit of time, and um, it's not a live demo because it includes cloning things from the network, and I, I didn't want to tempt uh, the demo gods by uh, doing it live. Things will go wrong, I'm sure, so it's pre-recorded and it's me talking over it. Hmm? 
let's yeah let's make it I can try to make it full screen better and <laughs> <laughs> not not really <laughs> okay let's um, yeah uh, yes maybe I will um, re-record this with a bigger font but, uh, yeah so uh, uh, and, and now um, uh, what uh, uh, is happening is that we need to uh, create um, uh, we cloned Pokey, but we need to create an additional uh, layer where we can store things for later use. So the build configuration and uh, uh, as a template and the layer configuration. So you do this by bit bake layers, uh, create layers, uh, create layer um, meta Alex Canavin, and that puts the layer on disk, and then you. Um, issue this add layer command to add a layer to uh, to your to your build and you can see that in conf vb layers don't conf it has appeared so you don't need to edit the, that file manually and um, the second thing is that we add a, a bsp layer meta intel so that there are actually uh, useful target machines in our build and uh, then we check what uh, available uh, machines. Um, uh, so we pick the one that's most uh, most useful, and uh, we go to local.conf, and that's where you uh, set. Say I want uh, to build for this hardware target. And the rest is deleted because it's not really needed. And the other thing is you just uh, say, I want to build for this hardware target in a way defined by uh, this distribution. So we pick not pokey, but alternative pokey, something else. Uh, just to show how you can make this choice. Uh, usually you have your own custom distro somewhere and we leave, uh, leave the configuration version as well. So now there is a ready build configuration and the next step is that we save it somewhere in this meta Alex as a configuration template. So save build conf and you need to say which layer and what uh, what is the uh, name of that template. So met Alex and the name of the template would, would be Alex's uh, gizmo because I'm working on a gizmo. So it's saved and it tells you to actually document what the, that build configuration does. Um, you need to explain to other people what is it for and uh, this is how. Um, uh, you edit the conf dash notes text in the in the template directory and uh, uh, the, like write as as much there as uh, you find useful but for the purposes of the demo we say this configuration allows building gizmo building a gizmo And you will see later why this is useful to do. And now, um, let me pause this for a second if I can. Uh, so this shows that um, that in the template, the list of layers is not specific to a disk, but it has this magic token OI root that will allow restoring them on different locations on disk.
And now that we have a build a template, we need to create a, a layers configuration so that people can restore all the layers exactly as we have them on this uh, uh, in this uh, setup. And that's another bit bake layers a sub command create layers setup, and you need to say where, where, what, where do you, where does that um, layer configuration go? And one choice is that it goes to the same layer, meta Alex. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it doesn't actually succeed because uh, to save layers configurations, all the layers must be clean. They shouldn't have uncommitted changes because if they have uncommitted changes, that means that people who restore that layer configuration will not get the same content as what's on your disk. So we make uh, Meta Alex um, uh, clean and actually a proper git repository with a commit ID. Just make one one commit so it's all registered in git. And we try again. Yeah, and now it 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 worked. So it wrote the JSON file and the script that operates on uh, that JSON file. It's a Python script. It's self-contained. It's short. Um, you can just run it. And the JSON file is, OK, here I pause for a second. Uh, it just lists uh, the layers, uh, where they come from, and uh, which Git repositories and which revisions do you need to get? And um, um, Meta Alex does not actually have a uh, Git allocation, but that's okay because it it uh, it's um, uh, like a bootstrap layer, meaning that you get it from somewhere and then you run the script uh, from that uh, from that layer. Um, by the way, the videos are available on the conference uh, schedule next to the slides. So you, if you can see this, you can run the video on your local laptop. And um, there are also like git describe strings that tell you a little bit what is it you're getting. So it's not just some random hash string, but you get a rough idea uh, what the setup contains. So this is first uh, video that shows how do you create a build configuration and a layer configuration. And there is a second video, shorter one, that shows once you have those things, how do you restore uh, a build exactly as it was. So let's start that. And again, Restoring a build. So, so I wouldn't. Okay. So we make a, a 
yoke to demo copy directory and we copy our, this meta Alex layer there, but normally you would clone it from uh, somewhere. But to simulate this cloning, we just, we just copy it uh, there. And um, then we uh, run the setup layers. It's a standard name. If you see it, then you run it. And then it uh, goes over the JSON. It clones everything that is listed in JSON, except uh, the layer that which we already have, MetaAlex. And yeah, cloning takes a bit of time. So we need to wait until it's finished. And uh, then uh, we need to set up a build from the Gizmo template. Uh, so we check that in Meta Alex there is a Alex Gizmo template, and then uh, we give that location to oh yeah init build env that is in Pokey, and that will. Uh, set up the build exactly as it was in the first video. Okay, there is a typo here which will be corrected in a second, like an extra space. Yeah, and um, okay, uh, uh, so um, let's see, um, uh, it prints like the standard Yocto banner and after that it prints um, like the documentation for the template, like this is where you explain to the users, okay, what do you do now? Um, uh, well, it says allows building a gizmo, but you know, probably you should also say now run Bitbake um, image, some image or some other Bitbake target that is useful and anything else that the users would uh, would need to know. And yeah, the bblayers.conf is uh, set up to work from the copy um, and the local.conf is as well set up as, as it was. And uh, that's really all there is to it. That's all I wanted to show. Um, uh, so let's go back to the to the slides. Oh. From. There is really um, just one more slide, and that's uh, the future, um, what still needs to be done. So one major thing that I think is missing is that uh, setting up a build from templates is not super friendly and uh, we can do better. So uh, I'm proposing a tool called OES setup build that is nicer to users and it's nicer to users because it can tell you what templates are available, it can tell you, uh, help you choose a template, it also picks a build directory for you so you don't need to decide where you want your build directory to be. And an uh, important point, I suppose, is that it doesn't replace or wrap Bitbake. It sets up a build for you and then stays out of the way. So the code for that is uh, written, it's in review, and uh, hopefully it uh, lands in, uh, in Yocto Master soon. 
Um, then the other two things are more hand wavy, uh, meaning that it's just ideas floating around, no code is written. One is uh, um, config fragments. Um, uh, so you can, um, like, uh, config templates are static. Like, once you write them, they stay as they are. You can't really modify them without modifying the whole template. But fragments can uh, let you, uh, like, tweak your build just that little, build, uh, little bit. And um, uh, if we can have some set of useful fragments, uh, uh, then it should be easier to add features without reading documentation. And the other idea is an even higher level tool uh, called OES Setup, where you would hopefully be able to express what do you want out of Yocta on a high level. And then the tool would figure out how to make it happen. Um, and um, uh, the final point I suppose I want to make is that all of it is available in Mikildor. And if you are using some older uh, Yocto, then you have to use something else, something external to Yocto. And the big three choices there are uh, CAS, uh, Repo, and Git submodules. And the CAS is actually the subject of the talk happening right after mine. So uh, if you want to know why use CAS, why not use CAS, how to compare this, then you should stay here and listen to that talk as well. And um, I guess um, please ask any questions. And thank you. And you mentioned the repo tool, and I'm, I'm familiar with quite a lot of companies that use this tool for Yocto. Um, do you think that what that this new approach will be? like better or what how is it better than for example using um, ripple well it's better um, first of all it's better because it comes out of the box so if you're setting up a new project you have the uh, the tools available right there and you don't need to seek a solution um, somewhere else and um, uh, on the other hand, if you have existing projects using repo, then by all means continue to do so. If it works for you, I'm not uh, trying to convince you to replace it. This is the primary target for this is uh, this is new newly set up projects. Um, but uh, if you look at a repo specifically, there are a number of problems with it. Um, other than its external project, the specific problem size, it's a Google project. So Google sets its direction. It's very badly documented and it's using XML, which I personally cannot stand to look at. Uh, related to the next, uh, the last question. So basically as an alternative to repo, you could use West, which is used by Zephyr. It's not, owned by Google and we're currently using it and uh, you can make plugins to it easily so basically what you had there could be made as Python plugins hmm. to that so you could just have your West workflow for you. Yeah I just want to point out that uh, these uh, existing tools are all battle proven so uh, yes people have shipped a lot of products with it and uh, they work. Uh, this is not battle proven yet, it's just been released, but it has the benefit of being inside uh, Yocto and being documented in official Yocto documentation. So people who start with Yocto, that sh hopefully will be the first thing they look at. Quick comment, so basically um, adding more tools like OE something 
is not very helpful because you need to read all the documentation to know that the tools exist so you can just get like git help style of yeah that you can do last question um, how would i integrate this into a continuous integration so I, I, you didn't say how, how I could run a build with a single command. Is that uh, possible? Yes. You, uh, uh, well, you need to execute commands in a sequence. Um, okay. Uh, so there is no single command that would uh, do all the steps, but uh, each step is uh, a single command. So you. Uh, Can I put them in the script, or mm -hmm. because uh, o o OE setup environment normally sets up another environment, and I uh um, well, uh, you you put them in in a script, yes. Okay. But uh, we build things from small pieces that do one thing, and uh, it comes together. So trying to make uh, all purpose tool uh, will not work in the uh, Yocto upstream world. Um, also because everybody has different opinion on what tool they think is best tool for the job. If you ask five people how we should do it, you get seven different opinions, which has happened right here. So um, uh, we try to solve small problems one by one. Thanks a lot, Alex.